Welcome to this episode of Log Talk. I am going to talk about how I do color correction on Final Cut Pro 10. In fact, I have been thinking about making this for a few months already, but I still hesitate to do it because I used to relying on a plugin for Final Cut Pro, but now Final Cut Pro, as you may or may not know, that Final Cut Pro had released a big update. That's a huge improvement. Now I don't even have to use any plugin. Now this is the new Final Cut Pro 10, the latest update 10.4. Now on the screen, this is a finished portrait of my review on the OnePlus 5T, which is my first review of an Android phone. As you know, I'm an Apple fan, Apple fan boy. Let me just start with this clip. This clip is uh, I've already done color correction, but I'm going to delete them. Before that, you will go to the effect panel and then drag in the color board. Now we've got the color board. This is the same as before this update, this 10.4 update. Now first thing about color correction is that you should not trust your eyes. Your eyes will trick you. You should trust those histogram, uh, waveform, and I was going to say pay waveform. It might happen to you, especially for beginner, is that when you, after you edit a photo and then the next day you look at it, you think, why did I edit it this way? It's just too dark. And then you edit it again, and another day you look at it again, it appears to be too bright. Because you are editing in different day, maybe you are tired, maybe the environment is different, so you should trust to scrub, not your eyes. Right, I think a lot of people who subscribe to my channel is more familiarized with this histogram. So I'll start with this, I will pick this clip and then on the color board, so we'll start from the highlight. I will look at the right side of the histogram, bring it down to 100. And then the shadow, bring it down to zero. And then the mid-tone according to what it looks like. Now you should use your eye because you have already set the highlight and shadow. Your brain would adjust to that. So you will use mid-tone adjust to that. Now this is a really easy example. Now let's look at another clip. This is from my UK vlog. Now according to the waveform, I bring down the highlight. But now my face is really dark. If I try to bring up the brightness with the mid-tone, it just make it really low contrast. I think when I was in digital web, when I start to use A7S2, I think you can look back to some of my footage, it looks like this. So we bought a plugin called the Color Finale, which is this thing. Finally, we got Curve to use. And kind of like, finally, it's like Curve Finale, Curve Finally. So I will bring up the exposure and then go back to color wheel, bring down the... Sorry about that. And adjust the contrast. Of course, there's more to the color Finale, but this is what I need. But now, as I say, I don't need that anymore because I've got the final uh, color, final, final cut pro 10.4. Now other than color board, you got this color wheel. This is really great. Start with highlight on the right side, this is the brightness. I will use this, look at the waveform monitor and then bring down the highlight just like before. And then we go to the curves. So now I will bring up the mid-tone on the master wheel there. I'll bring up the saturation a little bit. A bit more saturation mid-tone, which is my face. So this is Final Cut Pro built-in color tone, color, color, color 2. This is color finale, built-in color finale, built-in color finale. For something like this, a really bad lighting situation. Actually, this is kind of my fault. I should have dialed in a little bit of exposure compensation because it did the backlighting is just too much. Shadow. How about I use a mid-tone here? Sometimes a bit lazy, just use the mid-tone tool here. And then bring up the master saturation. I think that is. You know, when I first got the Color Finale plug-in, I feel like I want to go back to all the old projects and then do color question of all of them again. Now I feel the same. <laughs> Because now the new file couple got something even better than using plug-in. 
as you can see, my face got a different light source on my face. My face now green. We start from the usual, save the highlight, and then set the shadow, bring up the mid-tone. Uh, sometimes I just being lazy, go back to color board, and then bring down mid-tone to give it more contrast. On my face, it's green, but there is a new thing called hue saturation curves. Now you see, oh, so many stuff. You can use this hue versus hue. You use the color picker here. Click on my face. And then it will show you this is the area you should adjust. So just move a little bit. You can make my face any color you want. But of course, I want to bring it to natural. Look at that. That is simple. Before, after. Before, after. What else? Hue versus saturation. Oh, I can saturate my face. Look at that. Hue versus Luma. Brighten my face. You can really spend a lot of time in here. What's more, you got to correct color temperature just like you doing with raw photos. Well, actually not the same, but still. Under the color wheel, you got this temperature slider. Just slide a little bit more to the warm side. That's it. Hold on there, hold on there, news flash. This is another day. I have already finished this video, but this is the next day. Obviously, I have different clothes. After I done this video, I already export, uploaded, and then I find out on the web there is a hidden white balance color picker hidden in this 10.4 updates. So I have to add this part into this video. So for example, this one, you can see the color on the table on the disc is a little bit off, a little bit towards yellowish, a little bit green as well. Here you see this magic wand thing. These are the features that we professionals that never use. These are like for, for loops because these are like the auto autocorrect thing. After you apply the balance color, it's supposed to correct it automatically with AI, deep thinking, something like that, uh, deep learning. On the upper right corner, you can change from auto to white balance. Now you got a picker. You know what to do. You pick uh, maybe the table, you click it, and it's adjust to that. Then now you can start from this and add another correction and then correct it. Well, that's it. That's the white balance color picker. Is it useful? It really depends. How much is the color is off from natural white? Also depends on is there any white object at the right position on the, on the frame for you to pick the color. Maybe there will be situation that when you, you just can't get the color white and then you try that color picker, boom, suddenly done. It's just good to have one more tool, isn't it? So yeah, back to the original video. In the color wheel, you can also adjust the mid-tone color a little bit. So if you just need a really simple adjustment, you can just do it with the color wheel. You don't really have to go to that big curve thing. One more thing, as you can see here, we I got a whatever Alex 4D adjustment layer. This is um, this is actually just um, kind of like a title. Someone actually found out that you can use title the on-screen title, the, those tags in Final Cut Pro to make it to becoming an adjustment layer. You can make this yourself in the Apple motion, but there are a lot of free download adjustment layer you can find. So if you go to Final Cut Pro free adjustment layer, there's already a series suggested website, and this is where I got it. So this is how I do it, really simple, really quick. Of course, there's more to it to color correction, color grading, but this is what I think. This is enough for me anyway. I hope this is helpful to you, especially if you're already curious how I do color correcting. And if you're curious about what kind of gear I use, there are link in the description box. And then there's a link to a website called kit.com. That's got my whole list of video gear, travel gear, gear I use at home. And also check out my Patreon page, Patreon page. If you feel like you like this channel so much, you want to help out this channel, check out Patreon, pick a reward, any little help comes. So thank you very much for watching this video. Comment below, do you like this video? Or I don't know what I'm talking about, just like last time I talked about 
audio noise reduction. 